So now you're here again knocking at my door A little too late for I'm sorry for The lights went out cause you kept cutting What's up you guys, it's and welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. So I have another True Life series for you. And if you don't know anything about my True Life series, please go take a look around my channel. You can go to my True Life playlist where I talk about various different professions. And also I just feature other students and other individuals that are PAs currently um, working in different specialties. So if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. Please, you guys, forgive my voice. I did a lot of yelling yesterday. <laughs> in terms of like playing taboo and you know saying no people are cheating so that's why I am a little bit hoarse but I had to get this video out for you guys because I am so excited about it so this video is going to be featuring Joan she is a PA student in the UK I know the UK there are PAs in other places other than the US and Canada which is dope and so that is why I wanted to bring um, this information to you all if you are interested in what it's like to be a PA in another country. So that is what Joan is going to be talking about. She is going to be talking about her experience thus far as a PA student in the UK. So I'm excited. Please sit back, relax, and without further ado, here is Joan. Hello, my name is Joan Mbola. I've just finished my first year as a PA student in the UK, and this so is my true life. Again, at my door. A little too late for so I first heard about the PA profession through my university's website. Actually, I think it was through their YouTube channel. This was back in 2016 when I was doing my undergrad um, degree at St. George's University in London. Before that, I had never heard about the course, which is so funny because my university has been doing the course for the longest in the UK. So they've been doing it for about 10 years. I think we are the 11th cohort, so they've been doing it for a really long time. And in 2016, it was the first time I heard about the course when they posted a video on the YouTube channel. And I watched that video and I found it really interesting um, about this new healthcare professionals who are not doctors but then who work alongside doctors and nurses and other um, healthcare professionals to diagnose, treat and manage patients and pretty much from there my interest was taken and I started to find out more about the course and do more research. Door, a little too late for, I'm sorry. So um, I think over the last couple of years, the PA profession has been made well known to more, more and more people are getting to know more about the course. And, and the profession and the role because more universities are starting to um, do the course and offer the course and that means that more and more students are beginning to find out about the course and apply for it. The course has been around the UK for quite a while, I think since 2004, but people didn't know about it because there weren't that many PAs working in the UK. But I think now, because more universities, like I said, are training more students and more, more students are getting qualified and sent to hospitals and GP surgeries, more patients are being exposed to the role and we're being pioneers of the role, which is great. It's very different from the US where it's very well established and it's been there for about 50 years. In the UK, I think majority of people don't know about the PA role, but I would say that more and more people are starting to find out. So it is a postgraduate masters. Most people, most universities offer it as a two-year postgraduate program. So a um, masters, an MSc, or just a PG dip or postgraduate diploma. Uh, so for two years, that's what it is. So you'd have to have done an undergraduate degree for three years at least and then after that you can apply for the PA course so most people can do it straight after university like I did um, I applied straight after my undergrad and I got in and started the course um, but some people are, have been out of university for a long time and they've been they've been working in either the health sector or in a sector that's completely different some people have non-science backgrounds and they have some sort of experience with people and they can apply for the course so it is a postgraduate program um, everyone who has done it has done a degree 
Um, most universities, like I said, offer it for a two-year program, but some universities in the UK offer it as a four-year undergraduate program. Um, but that's not the norm. It's usually a two-year program. I don't know if in, in terms of getting in, so you do apply and then um, most unis invite you for an interview. So the different universities have different styles of interviews. You can either have a multi-mini interview or a panel interview, or you can have a um, uh, presentation that you have to present or group discussions, loads of different ways in which they interview PA students. And then after that, you um, get off for the place. So at the moment, um, to get into PA school, you don't have to do an admissions test, which is what um, getting into medical school and quite, um, requires you to do for most universities. But it's purely just the application process, the interview, and then um, getting an offer really. You kept cutting the cord and I started to fade. So at the end of the program, you have every single PA student in the UK has to sit and pass the national exam. So the national exam holds, um, most people that start in September usually do it in September at the end of their second year. Um, but then it holds throughout the year as well as the sum in January, I think in March as well. And it has two components. So it has a written component where you answer i think it's 150 questions for three hours um I, I think that's what it is um i might be wrong but i think that's what it is and um then you have the second component which is called an oski so that's the clinical aspects of it where you have 14 stations and you have different stations and students go in to each of these stations and they're tested on um, different things so it could be a procedure like suturing or giving an injection or it could be to perform a clinical examination or it could be to take a history from a patient and then the examiner asks you questions so yeah those are the two components of it the the written component is usually done in London while the um, the clinical component is done in Liverpool so that is that is what the um, certification exam um, requires you to do, I think you would be required to sit and pass this exam to be a qualified PA. See, I finally opened up my eyes. Mm, so the role of a PA in the UK is um, the fact that they work under the supervision of a consultant doctor, that's a supervising doctor, and um, their role entails taking a history from patients, being able to examine these patients, either to come up with a differential diagnosis and also to come up with a management plan and to treat these patients as well. So PAs can work in primary care, so in GP surgeries, GP practices, or they can work in any specialty in secondary care as well. And you can have some PAs as well in surgery. So that is basically, in a nutshell, the scope of practice for PAs in the UK. At the moment, PAs aren't um, allowed to prescribe or sign their own prescriptions and they're also not allowed to um, order ionizing radiations at the moment so PAs in the UK they can't sign their own prescriptions and they can't order ionizing radiations however we are going to be regulated soon we're going to have our own regulatory body and hopefully when all of the process is set up and running we will be they will set up an exam for us to be able to write and get our prescription rights but at the moment PAs cannot sign their own prescriptions and they can't um, order ionizing radiation. So I think it just depends. I'm going to walk you through quickly just a typical day in a week. So Mondays uh, we usually have communication skills. So we go in and we're in different groups and we practice how to take a history from a patient and to come up with a differential diagnosis, how to explain a diagnosis to a patient or how to explain the initiation of a treatment. And then we have lectures. Then on Tuesdays, we usually have what we call PBL, which is problem-based learning. Again, we're in groups, so we come together, we have a case, we discuss the case, um, come up with some learning objectives, and then we go, go, go home for a week, answer these questions, and then come back and discuss the answers to the questions. Wednesdays in first year we have placements, so GP placements once every week, so every Wednesday in first year. Um, and then in second year at my university we have hospital based placements all year pretty much. And then in first year as well, Thursdays we usually have anatomy and then we have more physiology teaching and more lectures. And then Fridays are for clinical skills, so we clinical examination skills we learn about, I don't know 
taking a cardiovascular exam or upper neurological exam or a PR exam and stuff like that. So that's basically a typical day for, at my uni in first year. And um, in second year, like I said, it's mainly placements all year. So secondary placements in hospitals all year. I know you said a day, but I thought a week would make more sense. Uh, and the days usually con consist from... Um, us coming in at 9 a.m. and finishing at 4 or 5 p.m. So, yeah. I waited for you in the passenger seat. There's only so far I can ride. So, I think the biggest challenge working as a PA in the UK would be um, not necessarily the patients themselves being um, skeptical about the role because I, I think patients are generally very lovely from my experience from um, working um in uh, doing my placement in the gp practice whenever patients don't understand my role and i explain to them they're usually very accepting of the role um but i have heard quite a few stories of um, pa students in hospital settings where um other healthcare professionals are a bit skeptical about the role because they don't really understand it they think that we're there to replace doctors well some Healthcare professionals think that we're there to replace doctors. They don't really understand fully what we do, what our scope of practice is and all of that stuff. So um, I think one of the challenges could be is the fact that we almost will have to constantly have to prove ourselves and to prove the fact that, you know, even though we've learned 80% of the knowledge, even though we've learned 80% of the, the stuff that doctors have learned in five years in like less than half the time, we are still qualified to deal with patients and to make you know clinically sound decisions i think it would the challenge would be constantly having to prove yourself to other healthcare professionals to know, to make them know that you you are you know um competent to do your job um but because i've had like i said i've had brilliant experiences with patients themselves but it's it's the, i feel like the most challenging thing for me that i would find is working with other healthcare professionals as well and being in a team that is supportive of your role and a team that knows exactly what you're there for and they know your limitations and that's ready to support you really the main thing i'm looking forward to really is just the patient um the patient interaction side of it unlike doctors who get to progress um going up to higher levels in their career and or some of them get into consultant positions where they have less clinical contact with patients i love the pa role because i can stay in a job or in a specialty as as long as i want to and if i don't like that anymore i can just move to another specialty so i love the flexibility of the role and I love the fact that um, I get that I'm guaranteed that patient contact throughout all of my career, which is what I enjoy about working in healthcare. And I don't want to lose that. And I, I'm really looking forward to spending time with patients. And yeah. I'm starting to break out from the gray. Yes, my course director so for my university she trained in the US and she moved to the UK and she's been working in the UK for a long time now and also we have loads of other American PAs on our course so yes they can move from the from the from America to the UK and work as a PA See, I finally opened up my I've only noticed American PAs working in the UK. I don't think I've noticed any other PAs. I'm not sure if any other PAs from other countries can work in the UK, but I know Americans can. Um, the downside to all this is that UK PAs can't work in America, which I think is rather unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I think that the system is quite different between the UK and America and in terms of your certification exams as well. So I guess that's why there's that limitation. But yes, American PAs can work in the UK. And I saw me coming back to life, I'd be yes, I think that the PA role promises a very, very big, ter like very big um, change and a very big help to the, the, the national health service. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but the NHS or the National Health Service is the healthcare system here in the UK. For many years now, it's been struggling, it's been overstretched. Um, there's this short, short staffed, um, the, the service is heavily short staffed and loads of trust and hospitals are suffering, you know, devastating consequences because of this. And I feel like the PA role is perfect because 
its aim is not to take away from other healthcare professionals. It's to train um, people who, are, who aren't already in the healthcare profession to go in and to help elevate this load that's been placed on doctors whilst working within the limitation of their of their role and their knowledge and their training and i feel like this will help a lot in terms of providing that continuity of care um because i think it's very very important for the patients because it's, it's good for patients to always have that person there who can who knows how things work rather than having doctors coming in and going the next day or going round and round in circles and you know and that's what the doctor life is because doctors um, tend to rotate between specialties but if you have someone there e.g the PAs who have been there for a long time they know how things work they know how the system works it provides that continuity of care and I feel like that is the main reason why the PA role was introduced in the UK is very very good for patient-centered care which the UK healthcare system seeks to provide and I think that's going to that has the potential to change um to make the NHS a better service and to help self the um, serve the patients. It's time to be someone I want to recognize. But I just want to say that um, PA school is hard. I have finished my first year and that was a roller coaster ride, a massive roller coaster ride filled with so many ups and downs. Um, it is hard, but it is very possible. And I feel like my faith has been tested on so many different levels during the past year doing this course. And um, the one thing that I learned from doing this course is the fact that I cannot rely on my own strength to do anything. I have constantly had to rely on God and um, to help me pull me through this past year. And it's just to know that you can do it. It is hard, but it's not impossible. You can do it. And if loads of people have done it before you, then, you know, you just need to keep encouraging yourself, putting your hope and your trust in God and holding on to the fact that he has brought you through it and he will bring you till the end. And yeah, so it is hard, but God is with you. So you can do it. Um, if I could pull through, then I'm sure you can too. So don't be discouraged keep going it's hard but the end will be rewarding john thank you so much for all that information i mean i learned a lot did y'all learn a lot i know y'all learned a lot because i learned a lot okay i think it's so dope that as a pa in the u.s you can leave the u.s if you so choose and you want a different kind of scenery you can go to the uk and still work um with your license and that is pretty dope i mean i think that that is something that you should be aware of like your scope of practice in other countries and how that may you know how you could transition so thank you so much for sharing that information with me and with my viewers because i'm pretty sure we did not know about that um i know i didn't also i really liked what you said when you said not your will but his because only by god's grace could we make it through pa school and you know life in general so thank you so much for sharing that you guys please 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 go give her some love. Check out her YouTube channel, her Instagram, um, follow her, subscribe, and also um, just leave a comment in the comment section below of any other profession that you may want me to feature or any other true life series video ideas that you may have please leave that in the comment section below oh my gosh joan i do also want to say huge congrats to you for completing didactic year and making it to clinical year that is a huge feat in and of itself and i am so happy for you i wish you many blessings on your continued journey thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Um, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and like this video, leave that comment below, and follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye! Thank you so much, Adana, for this amazing opportunity to be part of this documentary. I know this is not part of the video, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day and God bless. Bye.